Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, now I said I was going to breed the chili rasbora in this tank, but I was telling Fibs I'm going to breed the x-ray tetras. As you can see, I put them in last night out of the bench tank. She's very, very heavily pregnant, full of eggs, sorry. And um, I've got two females in there and one male. Now they're already showing signs of breeding. I've put some, um, some live baby brine shrimps in there. That as I always say, kicks things off. They have a good feed. First light, I've just turned the lights on and they're all going to go around scoffing all these little things and that normally kicks off the spawn. I haven't done anything special with this tank. This is a low pH tank anyway, okay? This, it's got a pH in here, I would say, of around 6.5, 6.6. Um, it's got a buffered substrate in there, shrimp substrate. We've got a lovely carpet of Monte Carlo in there. That lovely little tree which I made about, I don't know, about a week ago now, up in the corner there, with some rickia for the foliage, and a nubius at the back, little sponge filter, which is obviously all cycled, the tank cycled, and um, everything's looking good. Now, I've been feeding these guys up like I always feed my bench tank up, because I'm always breeding things for you guys, putting things in there, and as you can see, she's nice and chunky. I think it's the little one that's going to breed more than the big one, though, to believe it or not. She's the one that's showing more signs and he's showing more signs of interest. Now you can see the male, he's a lot thinner there. He's the one displaying, just chasing around. And the females, you can see the x-ray tetras. You can see she's got a lot bigger, well both the females, have got bigger body cavities to hold those eggs and produce the eggs. And obviously that one female there stands out because she's very full of eggs. But we're gonna see if they'll go. Maybe they'll go once one of them starts that hormone will be in the water and that normally kicks them into breeding. But we'll see how we go in the next hour or so. I've just made myself a nice coffee. If you're new to my channel, guys, hit the old subscribe button and that notification bell for up and coming videos. And I sure would appreciate it. It means a lot to me and the channel. And it's great to have you guys on board. We're nearly at 20,000 now. We're only about 50 or 60 away for that JBL giveaway as well. Don't forget that. Really excited about hitting 20K and um and onwards and upwards for the channel it's hopefully I, I'm, I'm putting all this stuff out there for you guys so you can breed stuff go back got a big library now of breeding videos angel fish you name it it's all on there go and look in my playlists and if you fancy breeding the type of fish you can follow them if not maybe i'll breed them in the future or you can always put a a little comment in there mark can you breed these when you've got five minutes and i will uh, i will keep an eye out for you and um, if i come across some I'll condition a few up and, and breed them, okay? But these guys are looking like they're gonna they're, they're gonna spawn. They're very, very they're quite big spawners. X-ray tetras. But as you can see, I've got no media in uh, no spawning mop in there. Well the reason for that is we've got that carpet of Monte Carlo, so the eggs are gonna drop in a, in between all that and um, and get lost in amongst it. There's a few shrimp in there, but like I've said on previous videos, you don't really need to be worrying too much about the shrimp because they'll eat dead and decaying things but they're not too they're not too fussed on live living eggs. I've had them in with the corries in my in the big bench tank and they, they go up to them and they hang on to them and I've looked on through a through a very high magnification lens and they're not touching them at all. They're literally if anything they're cleaning anything off the surface of them than uh, trying to pull them off. It's quite interesting to watch. They may ingest some of these very very small eggs but it's going to be very, very small, the amount that they're going to be taking. Oh, I thought they were going to go then. As with Tetras, they come, they come together, bump together. The male bumps her, which squashes out a few eggs, and he will release that sperm, and they'll fertilise, and then they'll, they'll scatter all, all over the bottom there. And hopefully they won't go beyond the trees and do it. They tend to do it at open water, or mid-water. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Like I said, I've done nothing special with this tank. Temperature's 27 degrees. And it's a pH of around 6.6, 6.7, I would say, somewhere around that. I wouldn't worry too, too much about pHs. As long as it's not up in the eights, you haven't got to worry too, too much. All right, let's see what happens.
And if I miss anything out, guys, as always, leave me a comment and I'll, I'll get back to you. It may take a while because obviously the more videos that I'm putting out, I've got over 300 and oh, I don't know how many videos I've got out there now, but I get comments from nearly the first one all the way to the latest one. So, I mean, I, I end up with a, a lot of messages every day to, to go through and it's getting more and more all the time. But I do try and get back to you as much as I can. I'm sorry if I miss a few of you. But if I answered, I think, every single one of the questions, I'd never make any of these videos for you because I need to be spending time doing this. But if it's a serious question you want me to answer, get in touch and I'll do my best to answer it for you, okay? Should start seeing some freshly uh, hatched brine shrimp floating down shortly. A little bit of courtship going on there. Now I got one male in there and two females. There is another male in the back somewhere, but I think he's been outcompeted by that male. Lots of courtship going on. I do love to watch these guys because they really do display those little flags, those little fins. And it's great to watch. He's going between one then the other. Seeing who's receptive. But like I said, normally that brine shrimp will kick them off. Lots of food in the water, like I always say. And she's heavily laden with eggs. The good thing about x-ray tetras is, guys, is you can actually see the eggs through the body. They're that transparent. And as you can see, I've got no spawning mop in there because I've got that lovely carpet of uh, Monte Carlo. And the eggs are going to drift down in amongst that and they're going to hatch out. So that's basically a spawning mop in itself. So I haven't bothered putting any spawning mops in there because that's going to do the job grand. Oh, there you go. Beautiful big cluster of eggs there falling down behind the um, behind the sponge filter there. That was a lovely little cloud of spawn there from the x-ray guys. The x-men and women I should say. Now that pheromone will be in the water now so that will really kick things off. Well, I'm glad they showed you that little spawn. I do love this little tank. I made that rickier tree maybe a couple of weeks ago now, and I just used some of the old privet hedge that I had. If you watched how to make a bonsai tree video that I put out a long time ago now, I've still got some of that left. So I've, I made another one. I put the rickier on the top instead because you can intertwine it in amongst the, uh, the roots or the branches, I would say. And... Um, and it will, because Rickier floats, it'll, it'll anchor itself to the wood eventually. You can tie it on, but it looks quite effective, I think. Let's have some more spawning, please, guys. Now, you're going to wonder about the shrimp in there as well. Now, like I've said in previous, some of the shrimp may have some of the eggs, but these are heavy spawners, and some of these are going to go right down the bottom inside the... Uh, inside and underneath the leaves of that Monte Carlo so they're not going to be found but I would have thought some of them will be found but shrimp tend to eat the uh, the rotting dead decaying eggs so they do a good cleanup job as well so if you've got shrimp I've said it before in other videos in your tank with your fish don't panic too much because mostly they'll leave them alone Oh, there you go. Lovely little cloud of eggs again. Look at that. They're tiny. They're about as big 
Uh, not much bigger than the uh, the brine shrimp, to be honest. They're that small. You can just see them floating down there. And then, as always, we're going to remove the parents. So, um, and basically, guys, with this, what I've done is I've done no special treatment for this at all. Now we've got a lowered buffer pH in there anyway. Temperatures around 27 degrees. And I've done nothing special. Like I said in a lot of other my a lot of my breeding videos, guys, a lot of people chase parameters to breed things. And um, I found over the years you don't really need to be doing this because it's it's nice to drop that pH from your normal tank a couple of you know a couple of clicks down. But you'll find if your fish are spawning in your tank and it's seven, they're used to those conditions, okay? So there's no there's no mad rush to go out and lower pHs and do massive things. You've only got to lower it a little bit. And by just putting leaves in, I find, and lowering that with the tannins, that will lower that pH slightly. And it's just that slight drop of pH that added help from the antibacterial, antifungicidal properties that leaves, catapa leaves, oak leaves and things, and all the cones have got, which will just give that extra boost, stop those eggs from fungusing up, and you'll be away. So really, it's I always say keep your eye on your fish. Watch your fish, and they'll tell you what's going on. Now, you, when you see them early in the morning spawning, just do a quick water test on your main system just to see what it is. Have you added a bit of wood? Have you added some more plants? Have you added this? Have you added that? And make a little note of the things you add. And that's what I do. And it's like a little, a little uh, tick-off list, which I do. Oh, I thought they were going to go again then. Um, just do a little checklist and write things down, mate. There we go. Boing. Not so many that time. Um, but yeah, just make a little list of things that you want to watch, that you want to watch out for, anything different you've done, if you've done a big water change. But just jot these little things down and you'll find that um, you'll work these little systems out. Every tank's different. Obviously water's different from where I live to where you live. The pH will be different, harder, softer. Now they're going behind the plants to breed. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. But that's what I would say to you guys. Now, if you want to watch my, like the neon breeding video, you can breed these guys in exactly the same way. There's various ways you can do it. Now I've always found the way fish are these days with um, with the captive breeding, and I mean these are commercially bred now and they're millions and um, by using the hormones and they use all different methods of doing this um, this breeding in these big commercial places and they um, and I find that now they're not they're not as hard to breed as they used to be going back a lot of years now when you got tetras and different things they were all from the wild so they were used to those conditions they were a lot harder to breed and um, and you really have to take your time and getting things right for them to get them to breed. They'd stay okay, they'd live okay, but to get them to breed, you really do have to, well you did have to, mess around with the parameters a lot more. But uh, he's still eager, that little lad, he wants to make some more babies, look at that. Go on mate, now she's telling him, go away. But look at my fins, they're beautiful. I don't care, I've had enough. <laughs> I'm coming back now. Yeah, she's chasing him off now. It's fantastic to watch, it really is. And like with all my videos, get that paramecium, that, that infusoria culture. Always get that ready beforehand, okay guys? Because these are super small and they need that micro life. Or you can use um, rotifers as well if you fancy doing that. You can you can breed some of those guys as well. But I find that the infusoria cultures are a lot easier to make. If you don't mind stinking out the house for a few days. Like I said, use banana. Go back and watch the Infusoria video that I put up, and I'll show it. it takes you back step by step how to uh, how to make a culture. Up. Anyway, guys, I'll get back to you when we've got some fry in the tank. I'm going to give these guys probably another half an hour, have another coffee, and then I'm going to um, going to get these guys out, put them back in the bench tank, and then we can wait for these little babies to hatch, and then I'll make part two. And as always guys, all stars, thanks for tuning in to part one. Love you loads, take care, and I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.